My mom kind of lives in the middle of nowhere too. But geez Louise, it's literally taken me an hour and a half to get to Kelly's house. My fault, I'ma blame it on Auntie Wendy Williams because I was <laughs> watching Wendy Williams and then I watched um, The View before I got up and got dressed. So yeah, so I ended up uh, leaving in the thick of rush hour traffic. But neither here nor there, I'm finally pulling up or I'll be there in about six minutes. And um, yeah, me and Kelly gonna have some girl chat. Yeah, I wanna know, um, you know, what's life been like since retirement? You know, what, what mommyhood is like? Is it everything that she expected it to be? Et cetera, et cetera. So, but it's gonna be fun girl chat. So I'll be there in a few minutes and we will be back. All right, so we are here with Miss Kelly Wells Brinkley. Do you go by Brinkley or? It, it depends, but like for TV stuff, I'm Wells Brinkley, but okay. in everyday wife life, I'm Brinkley. Okay, that's a good conversation. <laughs> so, um, I'm gonna start off with that, but before we go any further, if you don't know Miss Wells, I'm gonna call her Wells. <laughs> <laughs> All my try friends. <laughs> <laughs> Is the 2012 bronze medalist in the 100 hurdles. Um, how long were you professional? Almost 10 years. Almost 10 years. So, we be holding it down. They call me auntie now, so. No, they don't. <laughs> I like it, though. I'm cool <laughs> with it. I'm cool with it. So, um, Kelly and I didn't train together, but we were on the same track for a year down in Claremont. Um, so, now she's moved on to post-life. So, we're going to talk about um, what life is like now that she's no longer running, but... I assume you're still working out. You, yeah. still, you look good. Yeah. Thank okay. you. So let's start off with the the name thing because that was a conversation or it's been a conversation that I've been having a lot lately with some of my friends that are married. Yeah. And they're like, so what are you going to do when you get married? Are you going to... And I say, on all my official documents, it will be Mrs. Whoever, mm -hmm. Natasha Whoever. But when I do track things or speaking engagements, I would like to be Natasha Hastings. Why? Because I spent a long time building this brand and building, you know, whatever it is that I'm known for. Right. And I, I truly believe that while I aspire to be married and I, it's like, it's up there. It's very close to winning an individual gold medal, but it's, okay. it's, <laughs> it's one of those goals that like, life goals um but i do feel that when we get married as women we give up the most oh 100 so that's just a little piece that i just asked that i'd be able to keep so is that something that you thought about when you got married or was it something that you know some people just get married and it's like oh whatever i miss this whoever no it was the same kind of thing like i built my legacy mm -hmm. um and it took me a long time to use that word because it sounds so grandiose but i mean we did we built a legacy right. with ourselves and I was so thrilled to meet my husband and to take the name Brinkley. I even legally dropped my maiden name. Oh, yeah. I'm Kelly Louise Brinkley. Um, and yeah, it was it was a big step. And it was really important to him for me to be Brinkley. Yeah. Um, but we made a compromise that when I'm on TV or doing track things or whatever, I can be known as Wells Brinkley. So that was a, you know, fine thing because that, that was the only argument of like losing myself yeah. and then being like, Oh, we have Kelly Brinkley coming, and I'm like, well, who is that? Right. You know. So I just didn't want to lose that part of all that I had worked for and built because you know now I'm kind of back on the scene doing track stuff. Right. Exactly. So I think that's fair enough. Like, you get to hold on a little piece of who you are. I think I would do the hyphen Hastings, whoever. Mm -hmm. But you know, 
So, so how is life after track? Is it everything that you thought it would be? Um, is it easier or harder? I say it's harder. Really? Because when your life is in your hands, mm -hmm. you control what you're going to do. You say if you're going to go to Lausanne, you say if you're going to Monaco. But when you bring another person and all that they encompass into your life, then you have to start scheduling and balancing and, yeah. and you can't just pick up and go. You have to literally like check with them. Is it, I don't, is it okay? But like, you know, what do you have going on? What mm -hmm. do I have going on? Um, it's more fun being married. Like I have a good time because I married my best friend, literally. Like. By the way, her husband and I went to school together. So I guess you're a uh, honorary Gamecock. <laughs> <laughs> Um, and he loves you to death. He speaks so highly of you. Good. Always. Jeff is good people. He was like, I checked with Tasha to make sure that you won't know. And I was like, well, I should have checked on you. Cause he sure <laughs> did. He sure did. Mm -hmm. but, but yeah. So, um, dang, I lost my train of thought with that one. Cause we went down memory lane yes. a little bit. You said, is it harder? <laughs> yeah. Or? It's, I mean, it's, it's a mix of both. Do you feel like track kind of prepared you for that? Oh. Or? Cause with track some days some days you never knew what was coming mm -hmm. like so I kind of just roll with the punches especially being married to you know a former player it gave me an insight to you know the kind of life that he lives because we live the kind of same life right. especially over in Europe there's mm -hmm. lots of things that you know we have to do and take care of and with the, as being his wife I have to balance a lot of those things yeah interesting enough that that brings up something that's kind of off topic or not it's still on the topic because um you are a football wife. I am. Um, I think that that is something cool that um, you kind of you kind of touched on it. You kind of understand each mm -hmm. other, and there is the we talk about. I don't want to say this because I hate talking about females in this um, light, but there's groupies. Oh, well, 100. <laughs> but then we also have groupies 100%. too. <laughs> so um, I think it's interesting, like when you you talk talk about that do you think that that helps sort of with the level of trust that you guys have because like for us you know you talk about the guys and going off to the games and blah 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 but I actually think it's worse for us because we literally travel with the guys yes. we're in the hotels with the guys it's way worse for <laughs> there's us there's no like curfew there's no like meeting like it's you just make sure you're at the call room when you're at the call room and that's facts. it facts um, but it's way worse for us and it was very hard for Jack to understand mm -hmm. of like Oh, I'm gonna call my boy such and such, or oh, we're all getting together, or you know, he'll call me when I'm in Europe or Asia. And he's like, "What are you doing?" Oh, I'm walking to the store with such and such. Right. And he's like, mm, "Hold on, on. <laughs> wait a minute, I don't know him." And I'm like, "No, like we, because if you think about it, out of all the professional sports, we are the only co-ed sport. There is no other co-ed sport, and there's not very many like." Regulation is the word that I'm gonna yeah. use. Like I said, like we could just as long as you're at the call room. That's it. When you're at the call room, just be at the call room. Yeah. They don't care if you show up hungover, or whatever. Just show up. Exactly. And, um. So it. I think it's much worse for us. Yeah. Because also, like we wear little clothes, and then we've got these amazing bodies with these hamstrings that poke out of places that regular girls' hamstrings don't poke out. Oh, our yeah. booties sit up and we And then also, muscles. we're also around guys who mm -hmm. don't look like the average, average guy. guy. Mm -hmm. And they're walking around. I have my girlfriend say to me all the time, I don't know how you do it with these guys rolling around. Me too, around. and I'd be like... They're like mm -hmm. brothers to it. I don't even look at them like that. First of all, most of them are too strong for me, but... Right. <laughs> Facts. But, you know, yeah. And then... Like you've run for ten years, I ran. We grew up together. Exactly. We've known them since some since high school, mm -hmm. college, professional. We grew up with them. So right. once the ones that are like our age, like first of all, we know their wives, we know their kids. We've been invited to birthday parties, yeah. and so it's not even yeah. like that. Like that's not to say that the hookups don't happen, but it does. <laughs> but um, you know, we're all grown. So with that, I kind of want to segue into track now because sometimes I feel like that piece where it's sort of like self-regulating is also kind of a hindrance mm. for our sport because, you know, one of the things that I also say is that we're so individual that it's hard for us when it's time for us to be collective and come together. It's hard for us to do that because we don't know how to. So I wonder if you have any, and you know, now that you're an alumni, um, any advice for us, you know, 
as far as what we need to do to grow Team USA and grow Team USA as a sport at home. Because, you know, we go over to Europe, everybody knows who we are. They have no clue who we are here. I would tell people, like especially the young kids that are coming up, to not be afraid to get out in the community. Mm -hmm. And we have to make people love track. And people love track by the stories mm -hmm. that come from track. Like right. you watch football, they give you a backstory of, you know, some guy that you don't know, but then all of a sudden you're pulling for number 21. Right. And you're like, oh, wow, you know, he I wrote a kid's book. Person, right? He yeah. went to the hospital, he did that, and he did that. And so we don't have a team to do community relations. Mm -hmm. So we have to do that as individuals. Get out in the community introduce yourself to where you train even if it's not where you're from right because those people become your greatest allies like i wasn't from claremont florida but the community embraced us because mm -hmm. we went to the hospital we went to the children's places we got out there and really introduced us and i ourselves. will say not to cut you off yeah. but you were training with dennis mitchell yeah what's the name of that group i know everybody star athletics, yeah, star athletics. <laughs> everybody like kind of unofficially names their training groups but i used to watch you guys used to do a, a lot, lot of, of community service stuff and i thought that that was dope because yeah. it's, it's true like you said we have to get out and we have to pour into those communities but when we turn pro we're not necessarily told or know that you have to almost make the investment in yourself mm -hmm. and in having your story told and being a household name and uh, relatable. And it goes beyond social media. Mm -hmm. And um, I did something with that, with the NCAA, like helping kids go from you know college to professional. And a lot of kids were talking about social media, social media, but it's more than that. Exactly. Because sometimes people want that tangible thing that they can give you a hug or mm -hmm. take a picture with you and then they post it on social media. Right. So it, you have to get out there in the communities. You have to commu or you have to get together with the people that you train with and you know people all the time like oh we just train together it does become a community you have to get together with the people that you travel with and really make these bonds mm -hmm. and figure out what you guys can do in the off season or off weekend to become a household name and it starts literally in your own backyard facts <laughs> the other thing that i um say that i think is a big part that track and field is missing is entertainment. I think, um, you know, when you look at marketing, sports marketing, it's always sport and entertainment. Mm -hmm. um, if you major in sports marketing, it's, it's called sports and entertainment. Mm -hmm. And I think that in a lot of ways, track and field has lost that entertainment piece. And one of the things that I talk about, say what you want to say about Usain Bolt, or if you're a fan or not a fan, he did something mm -hmm. that made him very relatable and made him very marketable. How many times when we watch the NFL, if you watch the NFL game, you get up and do your favorite football player celebration dance with them. They, they do things to engage the, the spectators and bring them in and almost make you feel like you're a part of that. And so that's one of the things that I've been saying that, you know, when I move on from this and I'm the person watching and pouring back into the sport that I would like to find a way to bring entertainment back into track and field. I mean, you think about Sean Crawford. I think one year he went out there with like a Zorro mask or something. And it was, it a was backwards a backwards hat mishmash bike. Yeah, <laughs> it, might, it might be a bit much and it might be too much for some people, but I think that in some way we have to bring something back to the sport to make it um, fun for spectators, especially here in America. Um, I was wondering if you had any thoughts on that. Well, I was talking about this the other day, and I think one of the problems is, like, with all the other sports, the athletes are tangible. Mm -hmm. You know, there's sideline passes. Mm -hmm. There are, you know, before the game, you get to see the players. After the game, you get to see the players. And track and field, we're so separate. Yeah. We have a call room. We're brought out to the track. You're ushered off. Right. There, I think there has to be some segue yeah. to where... And that's what I think is so dope about the street races. I love I yeah. I love street races and it's it's even fun for the athlete because it kind of takes some pressure off yeah, you because like, you know it's not it's like it's not like ultra serious right and then one of the reasons that the street races in Manchester um and where's the other one um uh, it's on the tip of my tongue Newcastle Newcastle are so popular 
Have you been? Have you been to Newcastle? Okay, so you know they bring you in the couple days early, mm -hmm. and then you do the community outreach, mm -hmm. and they have the kids races before, and then you go out there and you you know start the races or yeah. you talk to the kids before, and I think that that's something that we're missing here in mm -hmm. the states because you know they we fly in, we race, we fly out, no one even knows about right. it. So um, we have to, especially like with that track circuit that they're doing, you know, in the states with yeah. the teams. We have to get those I athletes. Think even that's a good idea. It is making it teams. Teams, you know? yeah. because you know, like okay, me and Tasha, we're on Team New York, so we got to pull for Team New York. But Down New York. Um, <laughs> shout out. But we have to get Team New York there maybe a day earlier than that. Send them out into those schools. Get them out because we got to get ticket sales up. Right. So exactly. You might give the kids free tickets, but who's bringing the kids? Right. Those parents, and right. so the parents got to buy the tickets. But you, we gotta. We gotta close that gap between the athletes and the spectators because there could be a Kelly Wells and a Tasha Hastings, but they don't, they've never talked to us. Yeah. They don't know if we're cool, if we're yeah. not, if we're fun, if we're not, you know, what our likes, like you love fashion, you yeah. love makeup. The only reason they would know that is if they saw it online. Mm -hmm. But if there's a little girl and she sees you and she's like, I just love your hair, you spark a conversation and there you go. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I think, so that leads to another talking point in that we need to have the community outreach we need to be willing to put ourselves more out there but I think as athletes and again particularly track athletes like me I'm an introvert mm -hmm. so I've had to Kelly oh, think okay. about to when no, you first met you're me, right, you're right. <laughs> so I've had to learn that okay if you want to be marketable you want to be on these things and it's everything from those community outreaches to when I'm on photo shoots mm -hmm. like I want to leave and everybody's saying they had a great time working with me they those, can't wait to work talks with me again for me being in media now everybody talks and you'd be surprised that like the one time that you were having a bad day how it follows people mm -hmm. or I was with um, somebody who does work for USATF and he was on a broadcast with me and he spoke ill of somebody mm -hmm. and so then it made you know NBC not want to focus on mm -hmm. them because so you just never know like you treat everybody with respect and right I mean you don't have to kiss butt but just yeah be pleasant so I think if, if I had to go back to my first year that is something that I would have like as far as giving Natasha mm -hmm. advice that you know you coming out of your shell is okay you don't have to be so serious yes be focused yes take your job seriously but you do take reach out and touch people yeah, yeah. um but then I, I feel like there's also the flip side of that too in that people forget that we're also human beings mm -hmm. And that's something that, you know, sometimes I'll get the little comments like, hey, I, I tried to get an autograph from you or, um, you know, I wanted to, I know that I can seem unapproachable, but I'm not. But <laughs> sometimes you also have to think about the time. You yeah. know what I mean? Like if it's in the middle of a warm up and I'm trying to get into my zone, I'm not necessarily that right. approachable at that moment. Then there's also instances, I always think back to my first Olympic team going to Beijing. I was on the flight with Serena and Venus. Mm -hmm. And I remember that flight to China was, let's say, 16 hours. Right. I got off that plane. I didn't want to talk to no one. I haven't had a shower in over 24 hours. Like, I was just miserable. And we got to baggage claim, and Serena and Venus had to turn it on immediately because paparazzi, everybody was around them. Pictures, autographs, interviews. And I remember looking at them, and I was like, Oh my god, I feel so sorry for them. Mm -hmm. Like, because nobody cared. Like, right. no one cares. Like, and then there's this sense of entitlement, like, well, you're here because of us. And it's like, to some level, yes, but remember they're human beings. Right. I'm sure this is something that you've dealt with on the other side too, mm -hmm. with your husband. Mm -hmm. Going out to eat. You'll be mid by Hey, oh my god, I saw that game on Sunday. Can I get a photo? <laughs> Sir. But you know he never turns down anybody. I never he is the life of the party but <laughs> you know sometimes it's like what is that saying like with great responsibility comes um I know what you're trying to like, say I'm horrible with those yes two, but though. like when you're at a certain level yeah it, that's just to, it to is who much is given much, much is expected yes yeah. so it is one of those things and you know maybe that's why Venus and Serena are so 
you know, marketable because mm -hmm. they can turn it on like that. Yeah. And then, you know, in the back of their mind, they're probably like, I know. I know they were. I know. <laughs> you just saw me get off this flight and you know where I came from. But. And the thing is, too, you could say yes a hundred times. That one time you, you say, say no, no, you're the worst person. Mm -hmm. And then it's everywhere. Yes. Because now they have social media that they can post it on and then retweet or mm -hmm. reshare, whatever you want to call it. Um, so, I mean, it's, it's all within balance and everybody isn't going to love you. There right. will always be, you know, the one person that takes something out of context and then it blows out of control like my 2012 Olympics, but we'll talk about that. Oh, here we are. Let me stop the camera and start over. <laughs>